It's time for Cutting Edge Consciousness with Freeman Michaels and Barnett Bain. Thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility. And we are back on Cutting Edge Consciousness. This is Barnett Bain with my co-host Freeman Michaels and our guest Coot Blackson. So before the break, Freeman, we were about to um, invite Coot to comment on um, moving beyond the boundaries. Well, and, and one of the things that we were talking about, Coot, you were sort of alluding to this, um, this way of, of being able to uh, rely on something other than thoughts to yeah. guide our experience. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to even frame it a little bit further. I, I, I'm going to talk about it in terms of developing an awareness, a, a confidence, tools even, to begin to pick up cues. Because so much of your life, uh, from what I, I know of you, uh, is, is that you have allowed yourself to be guided. You have, uh, you have picked up cues and, and stepped into a certain amount of uncertainty and mystery, mm-hmm. and that has made a, a tremendous difference. Yeah. That's what we really want to talk about, because, I mean, I think so many of us are tied to these notions of how things have been, and therefore that's how they're going to be. Yeah. And that, of course, is a self-fulfilling prophecy yeah. until... Until there's a sort of spiritual awakening and and or a, a breakdown, if you will, of that construct where we start to develop some other capacities and some other skills and some other ways of processing uh, uh, the data. Yeah, we get, condi- we get conditioned. You know, we're born as children and we're alive and we're in touch with the mystery and we're in touch with our <clears throat> spontaneous self, full self-expression, no shame, no guilt. We're just freely expressed. And, you know, as children, we go through life and... We start getting programmed by our parents, and maybe one of them's a little abusive or one of them's mean, and we go to school and the media. And as children, we start learning all sorts of ways and mechanisms and strategies to avoid pain and fit in and be approved and just survive. And we kind of sort of crunch down into a, and we sort of hold on and become a, a version of ourselves that we get identified with. And it's not really who we are, but we learn that way of being as a strategy and we hold on to that very tightly as a survival mechanism that we then call this version of ourselves me and just you know we we often say well this is just who i am it's just who i am but we don't realize because we got used to it we don't realize that we've gotten locked into an identity and the more we get locked into that shape that reality that belief system that way of thinking that emotional patterning the more we get locked into that the tighter we hold into that the less freedom we actually have to choose our thoughts to choose our responses to show up in the world and fully you know open to be guided because we're actually being run by this pattern conditioning that we learned growing up most of which is unconscious so for me, it's about developing that awareness and just beginning to explore and question who we are, question our thoughts, question our emotions, have a compassionate self-exploration, and begin to unravel some of those layers and really, you know, question like, really, is this, you know, is this who I am? Who am I really? And begin the exploration of feeling, feelings and emotions and exploring thoughts. You know, so. you have some pretty um, exotic. <laughs> Uh, methodologies <laughs> to facilitate people yeah. to the edge of their maps yeah. and to get them to become very, very intimately acquainted yeah. with the topography and the terrain of their maps. They yeah. very, very quickly with you yeah. come to a very profound understanding yeah. of what matters to them. Yeah, absolutely. Why don't you share a little bit about what it might be like yeah. To go uh, to go to a far flung corner of the world with Coot Blackson, yeah, and remember to bring your passport. It's one, of, one of the things that, that I created about five years ago, uh, I call the Liberation Experience, and that's where I, I really take a visionary leader or someone who wants to be a leader in the world up to big stuff to India, and I take away your money, I take away your passport. You have no idea where you're going. It's the true hero's journey, and you're stuck with me twenty four seven. You fill out your will before you leave. You write letters to everyone in your life in case you don't come back. You know nothing about the journey other than you have a backpack, a journal, and that's it. And I take you for about 14 days to India. It's a 24-7, nonstop, transformational, immersion you know, experience where I customize and really design 
a radical transformational process where I feel into where your deepest limitations are, those places where you're holding on to for a sense of, you know, this is who I am. And we all have those places that we hold on to for a sense of this is who I am and this is who I am. And I, I kind of strip everyone, I strip you of all those those holding places. Well, I'm a filmmaker, Coot, so I need some... You're begging for, You're begging okay, to so supply <laughs> some images here, and I know our <laughs> audience wants to hear. Give us a a little show and tell. Don't Obviously, you don't have to yeah, name any names, you know, but what's the kind of thing that has happened to the... You know, I may, I may, you know, I may, t- I put you in situations that might bring up your stuff, so we may spend 24 hours in an in a Indian train station where all hell breaks loose. You know, we're everywhere from the Himalayas to maybe bathing in the Ganges in Varanasi next to burning bodies, and you see bodies burning, confronting your own, you know, death and and mortality. Uh, we may go into the biggest slum in Asia. I remember I took a very, very successful entrepreneur into the biggest slum in Asia, and here's a guy who's complaining about his life, and I take him to meet my dear friend who lives in Dharavi, and we go through these winding streets where there's naked children just walking around by sewage, and I take him into a room, and there's my friend Vijay, and Vijay offers us food, and all of a sudden my friends ask the man, he realized, where do you guys live? And it's in an 8 by 10 room, and there's Vijay, his wife, his two children, his mother, his father, his two grandparents, and all of them, all seven or eight of them live in this room. And my client asks him, are you, are you, are you happy? And Vijay looks at my, my, my client and he says, we must be happy. Of course we're happy. You know, we have life. And you get to realize that nothing outside of yourself really can determine or has the power to determine your happiness unless you allow it. So we're, we, we go over from a, a, a slum to, to the Himalayas, to the Ganges, to, I mean, you name it. And it's, it's, it's a pretty trains, planes, automobiles, and uh, it's a radical process. I mean, I have people dancing in the streets and doing processes in the streets and, you know, meeting with the poorest people in the world and connecting with them and just ultimately having their identity stripped away so that they can find out when you take all that stuff away that you think you are, what's left? That's great. It's and what's great. happened to folks? What's happened to the... Oh, like, I mean, it's... Let me tell you, Bonnet, it's, it's... I mean, it's radical. I mean, people come back and they crack open in such... I mean, words that I c- cannot even explain. They hearts crack open. People's lives are resurrected. Um, I mean, it's... it's you know, it's a rebirth. It's an initiation and a rebirth into living one's true dharma, living one's true destiny, living one's true soul. It's it's a true it's a true hero's journey. And uh, you know, I um, I unplug people from the regular comfort zones and patterns that you know we think we're free, but so often in the West, you know, in LA or in America or in Europe or wherever part of the West we live in, we think we're free until. You know, but we don't realize that so much of our freedom is based on all these neat little things that we have set up in a neat little package and in a neat little way, like furniture in our lives. But the moment you take one, one thing away or you shift some, something in a relationship, the freedom goes out the window. Yes, we, we so often, um, I know I'll speak personally, for so, um, so much of the time uh, I confuse real change and real transformation yeah. with moving around the furniture in my own life. Yeah. And then I step back and I think, ah, well, look how, what a good guy am I. Look how, yeah. look how well I've done this. Yeah. Uh, when, of course, what is going on in the basement, uh, the basement holds the same old um, assumptions and beliefs and models and things. Nothing really changes yeah. until we are able to... Um, own what is in the basement and, and, to and see what, what's in the basement. And what, and what you said, Barnett, earlier, sort of where we were going, the idea that more and more these uh, uh, they're systems, really, they're systems of thinking, they're ways that we've held the construct together. More and more, they're coming apart in a very collective way. And what we're left with is a certain amount of uncertainty. What I think the uh, offer is, uh, from your perspective, is getting people in touch with some essential. Uh, components that that are qualities, if you will, that are far more valuable than the expressions that we deem valuable yeah. in the Western world. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. And I think to the degree you can really make peace with the 
unknown and to the degree you can make peace with uncertainty is to the degree you'll be free. The challenge is we're often in the West looking for a sense of peace, confidence, you know, certainty in the world. And the world is constantly uncertain, changing, impermanent, transitory, and that's not a great strategy. Well, it's, no. a, it's a great marketing strategy. Well, you, can, you can sell a lot of stuff if you can convince people that this will make them safe. Yeah, that's certainly always been that's been the case for a very, very long time. Yeah. But nothing, nothing changes until I do. Yeah, and there will be. Uh, I, I'm certainly not going to change by um, by confronting the image in the mirror and expecting him to change. <laughs> right. mm-hmm. You first. <laughs> yeah, you first. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, and there's a part of us deep down at the core of our being, our true essence, that is unchanging. Yeah. You know, that is unchanging, and I feel as though that's what we must reconnect to and recognize and re-realize, because that's the source of our freedom, and it's in us all. Yeah, this, this is the idea. There are, uh, the paradox, of course, is as we embrace uncertainty, there, there are things that we attach to that are far more certain, that are far more reliable in terms of, of uh, you know, being able to count on them um, and not not knowable with right. within the the uh, modulating devices of certainty and right. logic and reason right. and absolutes and right. guarantees we cannot know life beyond that um now well it's I wanted, the, it's the old I'm sorry the christian line that you have to give it all up to find it you know that you have to give it all up in a very uh, not in a literal sense but maybe in a literal sense I don't know well it's not a, gi- it's not the giving up of of the stuff, right. it's the giving up of the identifying with the stuff. It's the giving up of the uh, modulators that are uh, the beliefs and the assumptions and the feelings and the thoughts that are so conditioned into a certain matrix that that um, that downsteps all that is into a, a manageable bite-sized chunk. Right. We want to have a bigger chunk. We're going to have to <laughs> change right. the modulators <laughs> a little bit. Right. And uh, Coot Blackson is a modulator changer. changer. <laughs> nice. So you are, um, for those of our listeners who are um, tempted, <laughs> who are intrigued uh, by going to India... Um, or Bali. I, I will Bali. say you might even be more tempted and more intrigued to do the uh, somewhat uh, less confrontive but equally transformative experience in beautiful Bali. Yeah. Say a little bit about what's happening in Bali. Well, Bali is where I gather. It, it's inspired by India, but you know, it's where I gather 22 leaders and visionaries from all over the world. We've done three of these amazing journeys over the last year or so. And uh, we gather together, and again, it's a 24-7 transformational immersion, experiential, I call it seminar training without walls, where I use Bali as the seminar room, as the backdrop to soothe, to facilitate, to help really unravel people. And, you know, we gather as a group, and I really feel into where people's deepest blocks are. I create situations and processes, and we're in, we, we go from mountains to temples, and the whole time it's really about facilitating, kind of unscrewing and helping people unknot those places that they're holding on to that are really blocking their full expression. So, again, it's, it's an amazing journey, and it, I really designed it for those that have a vision, a vision of what they really want to express in the world, and they feel a calling to do that, and they've heard the call, but they want to clear away any of those blockages, any of those beliefs that they're aware of or not aware of, to really allow and give themselves permission to allow the bigness of life and grace and their true heart to flow. So I want to just add a little piece because uh, I, uh, you and I have been friends for quite a few years now. The folks that you work with yes. are people who are very successful in life in every sense of that word. They uh, live life... Um, rapturously and they have a sense of um, they have climbed the ladder of success and perhaps it wouldn't be an overstatement to to say that often they have found to to um, 
misquote uh, uh, Joseph Campbell that at the top of the ladder of success, it's been leaning against the wrong wall yeah. or a wall that is less than satisfying, that somehow folks have have achieved uh, these great successes and feel that it's let them down. There's something missing. Mm-hmm. And uh, so these are precisely the kinds of folks that um, are able to to connect with the passion and the meaning and purpose of their lives yeah. once they have come to the to the deep personal understanding that um, getting to the top of the world and in, in the way of the world uh, is not the it is not the answer it really is just the beginning of the question yeah yeah I mean you summed it up right there you know and I think I found that a lot of these folks have also found that you might get everything you want in the world but a life of getting and getting and more getting eventually may lead to dissatisfaction until you really tap into your true self and your authentic expression and what your gifts really are and I think there's a whole new possibility that becomes available a whole new paradigm of living when you tap into less about what can I get and that paradigm of getting to who am I and what can I give and how can I give who I am and give my gifts to the world. So. Be- beautifully said. And with that, Coot, we are thrilled that you spent the time with us today and with our listeners. Before Coot goes. The, the website yeah. for our listeners is Coot Blacks. Uh, tell us, is, I, I don't know which website you want to give. It's the CootBlackson.net. Is that what you mean? CootBlackson.com. Dot com. Yeah. And uh, the BoundlessBlissBali.com. Beautiful. And so folks can check out your work there. Love you, Coot. Love you, man. Be Thanks, great, man. Guys. Be well. Really, uh, have fun with you. And Thanks. those of you who are listening, stay tuned because we'll be right back here on Cutting Edge Consciousness.